This podcast of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs is sponsored by AAA Heating and Air. The premier HVAC company in the Midlands is growing. Are you a top HVAC technician? AAA Heating and Air is looking for dedicated applicants to fill their fast-growing service department with top-notch HVAC technicians. If you're the best, then they want you. If you're ready to stop working and start a career, you can earn up to $100,000 plus a year at AAA Heating and Air. Quality candidates will have at least two years' experience and a good driving record. Benefits include top industry salaries, commission on service and unit sales, set call limits, company-provided take-home vehicle and gas card, company-provided cell phone and tablet, help, dental, and vision benefits, 401k retirement plan with company match and scaled PTO based on length of service. Contact Roy and Dana Finley at 803-677-1500 or check out their job postings on Facebook or ZipRecruiter. Triple A air when you need us. Triple A heating and air. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs, founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark. The 2007 South Carolina class was, at that time, sixth in the country and fourth in the SEC, which is amazing. Wes Mitchell. You know, I think if you're South Carolina, you're you're aiming to, to at least be at 50%. Then, in theory, you're adding talent, you're getting better, you're putting yourself in a position to compete. And Tyler Head. It's been a great week for South Carolina. On the recruiting front, still certainly plenty to talk about. About. On the home of the Gamecocks, 107.5 The Game. And welcome into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Here on 107.5 The Game, Tyler Head live in the Herndon Chevrolet Studios. Wes and Chris out with birdies with Beamer today. A lot of fun obviously going on today. Colin Taylor, I know teed off at 9 o'clock. Uh, do you guys have any update on how good or bad Colin's been playing this morning? I, I need to know. They uh, they brought in some type of board a minute ago, Tyler, and um, I thought it was going to be a leaderboard. It had some markings on it and whatnot, and unfortunately, it was not. Was it the opposite of a leaderboard? <laughs> a loser board? Yeah. I, I don't know, but it, it was not. So we have not seen any live standings at all. Wes, do but, you have an update? Well, I'm just going to say this is called Birdies with Beamer. According to reliable sources, not many birdies Bogeys today so far. So I don't know. Take that for what it's worth. But I'll say this, man. We're at Cobblestone here in Blythewood. It is a gorgeous day. They've actually set us up with a fan, which is fantastic. It is a gorgeous but hot day. Yeah. But, um, yeah, excited. I was very happy when Shane Beamer brought this event back. Um, you know, this was something that Spurrier – was very serious about back in the day about doing it and i believe back when spurrier was here if you were on staff i think you had to play like this was very serious so not all the staff this year for south Carolina is playing but i do believe they will all be here checking in and uh so if you've been looking for some news since sec media day ended um you you should have some some you know some new info to chew on today we're gonna hear from shane beamer this afternoon sort of an official press conference type setting but then we will also hear from uh, assistant coaches throughout the afternoon they'll be doing some gaggle stuff some one-on-one stuff and from what we hear we'll also have some assistants dropping by uh, you know the show here today and i believe into the afternoon as well and then we'll be carrying shane beamer's press conference this afternoon live at some time that i I did have in front of me chris i believe it's two o'clock yes roughly 2 p.m so we'll have that, and uh, 107.5, the game will be live from here from right now to 3 p.m. So, Chris, is there anything you want to learn today that we've not learned yet? Well, we are just coming off media days. I, I think, well, we learn a lot from Coach Beamer's press conference today, and we're told it'll probably go about 30 minutes, so starting at 2 p.m. Eastern, roughly here, depending, you know, obviously they've got an event going on right now, but... I don't know that we'll learn a whole lot new based on the fact that he just did SEC Media Days and he just did kind of the big room thing. Given that we are, you know, this is a regional, um, you know, event. This isn't the big stage at SEC Media Days. There might be some opportunity to get a little bit more granular on some things. We might, for instance, get, I don't know, maybe we get a little bit more of a detailed, like, injury update than we got um, at Media Days. I think, Wes, the more interesting thing is going to be having an opportunity to do uh, some opportunity, having an opportunity to do some media stuff with some of the assistants. You know, will we learn anything from those? Um, 
now you're diving de- deeper down into maybe depth charts, if they exist at this point. Um, position battles. Those are the types of things that I want to learn more about today, whether it's some uh, some answers that Coach Beamer gives to some questions that are posed to him by the media or something that one of the assistants may say. That's that's kind of where I'm going as we get closer and closer to camp, diving deeper and deeper into some of these position battles, depth chart, injuries, the health of the football team. Yeah, so um, we can't really preview who we're going to be hearing from as far as yeah. assistant coaches. It's going to be a little bit more grab and, grab and go, so we'll – We'll see who stops by, but we do believe we're going to be able to hear from some different guys, and that'll be good to get some updates on what's going on at a position-by-position basis for, I guess, the first time officially this summer. I'm with you. You get fewer and fewer details, it feels like, about uh, you know unofficial depth charts this time of year. <laughs> but uh, you know maybe we've talked about it too much on the show so far uh, as far as the last few weeks or, or even months, but I, t- I tend to keep going back that offensive line position group what does it look like at left tackle for that matter what does it look like at right tackle how do they sort of fill in the different guys and um you know you you look at this roster chris there it it feels like this is a roster that brings back uh, experience Mm -hmm. but then you really start to dive into some of the positions and you kind of realize why shane beamer has consistently said all offseason hey guys we're going to play a true freshman at Pretty much every spot. Um, Chris, you may have already seen this in the media guide, but I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm hoping you haven't seen it. Do you know who the top returning starter is on South Carolina's roster in terms of number of starts at South Carolina? So it doesn't count. So obviously Spencer Rattler started an entire season, um, then some at Oklahoma. That doesn't count. South Carolina's leading returning starter Number of career starts at South Carolina. As you go, so I'm going to filibuster for just a second, but I also do want to make a point. It's one of those questions where you don't even realize that because they do have so many upperclassmen on this team, but yet even a guy like Tonka Hemingway has not started, like has he even started the majority of the games that he's played at South Carolina? I don't think so. Um so even you look at a guy like Marcellus Dial, right? He's been around a while, or or an OD Fortune, like they've been around a while. But the amount of starts, it's not like they've started thirty games. They have played some. They've even played for a guy like Dial pretty extensively, but they haven't been a starter. I mean, Dial's played kind of alongside. He's been a, a third corner type of guy with Darius Rush and Cam Smith in front of him for a couple seasons. Oh man, I get no hints at all. Um. Do I get an offense defense? Well, your your hint is that you're never going to get it without a hint. The last time you said um, I, I wasn't going to get it, I actually got the answer to a question. Okay, well, I'll, is it? Um, I'll tell you, it is. It is. Um, it is offense. It's. Uh, is it Vershawn Lee? No, he is up there though. You want to take one more? Yeah, one more stab. Don't want to fill the this bad radio for me to sit here and think. Um, Might hurt yourself on air. Yeah, twenty career starts. Twenty. It's not. It's not to carry on Joiner. No. Okay. Xavier Leggett. Gah! Yeah. Wow. Hmm. He started a lot of games. He has started a lot of games. Um, as you start getting deeper into this list. Um, and I, I don't have the full thing in front of me. I was trying to find it real quick. But Bershawn Lee has actually started a bunch of games yep. in his career. Although I, I feel like that doesn't necessarily click. It doesn't match. Like the, yeah, Ja'Kai Moore has yeah. started a bunch of games yeah. in his career. You really start to get over to the defensive side of the ball, and that's where you realize there there aren't a ton of guys that have just racked up. You know, you think of those veterans traditionally you see in college football – where a guy is a junior or a senior, and he started to close in. Oh, this guy's started 35 career games. You know, even Tonka, like you said, as much as he has played, he's not started actually a lot of those games. And um, you know, I don't, I don't know if that metric necessarily tells you everything. Tonka has clearly played a ton of ball. Yeah. But it does sort of does it change the expectation about this team a little bit? Um, I, I think there is a reason Beamer has been reminding us 
that ye- yes, you bring back Spencer Rattler, you bring back Juice Wells, you bring back um, Nicky Mawari on the defensive side, DQ Smith, you bring back some players, but as far as the guys are going to be filling in the depth of this roster and the guys are going to be suiting up in Charlotte, neutral site, huge platform of a game, um, some of these guys are going to be stepping into new roles within this team. Yeah, and you know, a couple points off of that. So when you're replacing guys off a roster, you know, South Carolina did lose guys who had started a whole bunch of games last season. I mean, since you're talking about offensive line, West, you could start there. I mean, Eric Douglas, Javon Gwynn, Dylan Wanham, especially Douglas and Gwynn, those guys started a whole bunch of games. And so, you know, it can be okay if you're replacing your established starters, some of who went on to professional football in the NFL, if you're replacing them with guys that are talented and maybe they haven't had as much experience because they have been sitting behind really good players, that's always a positive. But even if you have that, it might take you a while to figure out. You know, again, some of these offensive linemen, Lee, Moore, even if they're guys that have been starters, it's normally been kind of like a part-time starter thing or they're they're coming in as a rotational player. Marcellus Dial, has he had some starts in his career? Yes, but he's been more of a rotational player and a piece that's worked alongside some more starring players. Now he's stepped into a starring role. So have we seen some of what he can do? Yes, but it's different when you're getting you know into that role. Some of these guys too, Wes, even, I mean, Xavier Leggett, he was in, what, the 2019 recruiting class. So now you're going into his, what, this is his fifth season at South mm-hmm. Carolina and still only started 20 games. Now he's played a lot. But even a guy like Xavier Leggett, who is a senior who has been here a long time, he's still someone, as a more experienced player even, that you're looking to and highlighting as this is a guy that needs to take another step forward. So there's some guys kind of in his category that even as the leading snap getter or leading starter um, in terms of games played, he still has to take a step forward. And then you have some of these other players who don't have nearly as many starts or nearly as many snaps over the course of their career. Yeah, just something to chew on there. Leggett won. Ja'Kai Moore, second on the team in starts with 19. Jalen Nichols, who will miss yep. most, um, you know, if not uh, potentially the entire year. Um, 18 career snaps, so you, you don't really count him as far as what you're expecting out there on your playing roster for, for week one. Marcellus Dial, 17 career uh, starts. For Sean Lee, also with 17 career starts. And then um, actually the next guy on the list is Rattler, <laughs> and uh, and then even Mori just based on being at South Carolina for one season. So yeah, a little bit of, I think, perspective on some of the just spots on that uh, mythical depth chart we hear about that they're going to have to replace uh, moving forward. So, um, all right, let's, uh, let's send it back to Tyler. We're going to take a quick break. We are here live in Blythewood. We're at Cobblestone Park, and uh, again, we're hoping to be joined by some South Carolina assistants as we were at the Birdies with Beamer Golf Media Day, I guess you would say. And uh, so back to you, Tyler. All right, yep, they're broadcasting live from Birdies with Beamer uh, all morning long, and then Jay and Terry will take over as well with the halftime show. Uh, more of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour coming up next right here on 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. 107.5 The Game. Wes, we've been talking about the firehouse subs, pepperoni, pizza, meatball sub, I think every day since it's come out. And so we're really dialing in on it. As we get closer to the season, we're dialing in on depth charts. We're dialing in on the limited time offering from firehouse subs. That is the pepperoni, pizza, meatball sub. It's back for a limited time. Italian meatballs, extra provolone. Wes, that might be one of your favorite parts about this whole thing. Crispy pepperoni, not just any pepperoni. And a garlic Important bread note. roll. You can get the pepperoni pizza meatball sub in the Firehouse Subs app or online at firehousesubs.com for just $6. To get it for that special price, you have to download the Firehouse Subs app or order online. Highly recommend the Firehouse Subs app because you're going to earn yourself rewards on all of your purchases. And I know it's not Monday. We're sitting here on a Wednesday, but just to let you know, every Monday you get double reward points on your entire purchase through the Firehouse Subs app. Pepperoni Pizza Meatball Sub, Firehouse Subs app. Get it for $6 at FirehouseSubs.com or on the Firehouse Subs app. We'll have more of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Coming up next, 107.5 The Game. 
For a limited time, Sweet Deals is offering qualified listeners an exciting vacation. Spend four days and three nights at a luxury hotel in fun and fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada for only $99. Save more than $600. As part of the package, you'll receive $100 in free slot play, a $100 dining advantage card, and each guest will be booked in a suite. You'll be vacationing in luxury that's only available in Vegas. Attendance is required at a presentation for vacation club ownership, but who cares? Cares. There's no purchase necessary, so it's a win-win. Plus, we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Do not miss this exclusive luxury vacation offer from SweetDeals.com. That's three nights in a luxury Las Vegas hotel for only $99. Go to SweetDeals.com right now and snag this once-in-a-lifetime offer. That's SweetDeals.com. Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 1075 The Game. And welcome back into the Gamecocks Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Here on 1075 The Game. Tyler Head live in the Herndon Chevrolet Studios. Wes and Chris out at Birdies with Beamer hanging out all morning long. It's obviously. A very busy week for South Carolina football. You have to the birdies with Beamer event today. And then a very important cookout coming up on Friday at the end of the week. Obviously, a litany of players from the 25 and 26 class expected to be on campus, as well as a couple notable names for the 24 class and five-star edge prospect Dylan Stewart out of D.C. area, as well as Jalua Solomon, the four-star athlete uh, from Georgia, who's also expected to be on campus at the end of the week. Yeah, so this final week of July, with the way the recruiting calendar is set up now, Chris, has become like a, a really important week, I feel like, across the country. Um, you know, the, over the years, the recruiting calendar has been shifted, uh, you know, quite a bit. So July, for the most part, there are about three weeks in there where it's kind of the final reset, I feel like, for everybody involved in, in football. And uh, But then before you dive headfirst into preseason, which is what will happen next week, you have this kind of final week where it is a quiet period in recruiting, which means uh, you can have guys on your campus again. So that's going on right now. For most schools, including South Carolina, you do some type of event either on Friday or Saturday leading into the, the, the start of preseason camp. So for them, this has turned into a Friday deal and is a cookout. And the another name, the newest name on this list that we confirmed last night to Chris, Elijah Griffin, who a uh, five-star kid out of Savannah, defensive lineman. This is someone that's been on South Carolina's campus several times, but then there were some situations where we thought he might be on campus some in June that did not end up coming to fruition. So, uh, you know, assuming he makes it in as is planned, you know, he told me last night, hey, I'm, I'm coming, I'm going to be there, then you kind of start to see the star power for this cookout to grow, and you're talking about a guy who has been, according to some rankings, depending on when you looked, uh, the number one prospect in the country for 2025. So that what that means is now, Wes, you've got not only a couple very key targets for 2024, one of them being Dylan Stewart, but you also have some of South Carolina's longtime top targets coming in for 2025. So quick recap, top, a five-star defensive lineman edge prospect in 2024, who, and we were talking about this yesterday. This will be, what, probably his ninth, tenth visit to campus, which is unbelievable. And now you've got also Elijah Griffin, who's a five-star. Both of those guys have at least taken a turn at being the number one overall prospect in the country per on three. Dylan Stewart not currently, but still in, what, the top ten. I think he's number nine, number ten. And Elijah Griffin's still way up there, too. So let's kind of – we'll go through some of the other names. Let's talk about Griffin a little bit, though. So, South Carolina made some waves last year, or last cycle, rather, by signing Nicholas Harbor. Big-time guy from out of state who had a big-time offer list, a unique skill set. And it was the type, we said this when they signed Nicholas Harbor, this is the type of guy that was an attention-getter on the trail and the type of guy that if you're Shane Beamer, if you're South Carolina, you need to land, you know, for multiple reasons, because you're adding top-flight talent that you need to compete against teams like Georgia who are landing guys like this on the regular. Maybe not a guy like Nicholas Harbor, but guys of that caliber on the regular, right? Um, 
but you need to go continue doing that. And so now you fast forward to the 2024 cycle. You got a chance to do it with Dylan Stewart, and you're heavily in the game with Elijah Griffin, who, as you said, has already been on campus multiple times, but you're also battling Georgia and Clemson and Alabama and everybody else for this kid. Yeah, big boy recruiting battle right now on three industry ranking, which, uh, you know, basically is a weighted average of all four, you know, on three, 24 7 ESPN rivals, has him as the number one overall player in the class of 2025. Uh, Dylan Stewart not currently on threes number one anymore, but a guy that obviously at one point was number one in the country. So you have uh, essentially one of, you know, or arguably the top guy in the class for 2024, and arguably the top guy for 2025, all scheduled to be on your campus at the same time, which is uh, is pretty cool. Obviously, I go to a guy like Jalua Solomon. Oh yeah. And First of all, one of my favorite guys in the class because I think he is a super athlete. Could play, you know, it seems like he's going to play defense if he picks South Carolina. Torian Gray has been heavily involved, but you look at his film, you're like, man, this guy could easily play receiver if that's what he wanted to do, if that's what schools wanted him to do. And you look at that, this has been kind of a back and forth roller coaster type recruitment. South Carolina had the lead after his official visit to Columbia, Florida State had the lead after his official visit there. Then you know, it's reported, hey, he's going to be at the cookout. Then it's reported he's not. Now <laughs> that's back on. As of the last time he talked to the media, he's planning to be there. That's going to be one of those things where we're tracking, hey, did, did Lewis Solomon make it in? If he does, though, I, I think you have a scenario there where you could see Torian Gray adding another talented guy to sort of uh, this, this DB room that we've seen him continue to kind of upgrade as long as he's been here. And importantly, I think he has the athleticism to play corner as well. Yeah, Torian Gray seems to really like him as a corner. This one's been back and forth. It will probably continue to be back and forth. Wes, if you're South Carolina, you've got to obviously get him on campus and make sure he follows through with that. If so, there's still some buzz even without that visit happening, Wes. Chad Simmons of On3 continues to hear just in his atmosphere some pretty good things about South Carolina's chances but it's going to be a hard one to close out it's going to be a hard one for FSU to close out if they're able to land him over South Carolina August 5th decision I think for Jalua Solomon already set so we're sitting here on Wednesday July 26th the cookout is in a couple days if you're South Carolina you can get him in about a week before his decision that's a really good sign so um, you look at this DB class there's some good pieces in it already Two safety prospects, David Busey, Kelvin Hunter in the class. Those two guys are pegged as safeties. Braden Lee, four-star out of Maryland, he's pegged as a corner. Solomon would most likely be a corner. That'd give you two each that the staff seems to like a good bit um, at each of those positions. And, and obviously, you know, you could pick somebody out of that group, out of that four, to maybe play the nickel spot as well. Um, they've, they've hit on some guys. They've missed on some DB targets. You know, Malcolm Ziegler would have finished out your safety recruiting and would have been a huge get. You didn't get him. But you're still in the game with some guys. And I think Carolina fans are hungry to get another big-time commitment. It's been a little bit of a big-time commitment drought, you know, just in the month of July. Shane Beamer's kind of tried to calm um, those fears and, and calm those anxieties. But it would be huge, I think, if South Carolina could land somebody kind of coming off of this big event. Solomon's a candidate. Well, and, you know, you look at August 5th, um, you look at August 23rd, Daniel Hill. I mean, w- we thought July might be the month to kind of, um, you know, yeah. either either for Gamecock fans to feel really good about things or, you know, to, to for them to complain on Twitter a lot. <laughs> and so, really, it seems like August is, um, is going to be that month where they end up, um, you know, able to, to find out sort of the next direction for this class. Looking at this list of guys, Chris, um, and, and by the way, before we get off Solomon, actually, the the kind of wild card school that, uh, are they in it? Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not. Don't completely count out Auburn. Yep. yep. They are scheduled to get him in on Saturday. And so I think his brother is going to Auburn. Then he's actually got a younger brother who is a, a absolute stud of a prospect as well. So how does 
how did the fin- how did the family dynamics kind of play into uh, his recruitment? That would be something to, to keep an eye on as well. But if you get Solomon, maybe you have a leg up for little brother uh, down the road as well. Some other names, Amari Adams. You know, I, I don't know if the 2025 class in state is quite as strong as 2024 class at the top, in my opinion. But uh, Amari certainly belongs with anybody. Blue chipper, great prospect. Um, Ermo's A.J. Brand, local kid, plays quarterback for them, more of an athlete, probably DB at the college level. He's expected in. Chris, a name I think fans need to also lock on to, Thomas Blackshear, wide receiver. He's listed as a three-star guy. The, the word isn't quite out on this guy yet in recruiting circles as far as online, you know, the sites and all that stuff. But we saw him at 7-on-7. Seven seven. Savannah, yeah. top to bottom, just has stars. There's something right in the now. water over the next couple years there. If you can build the Savannah pipeline, then you're going to be sitting pretty if you're South Carolina. And so he's another guy, 2025. But don't be confused by, hey, you know, three-star, whatever, whatever. I think Blackshear watching at the 707 is a potentially national-level guy. Like, I, I think he's a four-star guy, but potentially even kind of maybe uh, the higher end of that. Yeah, Gamecocks offered back in the spring, and then I think uh, in the last several weeks or couple months, Wes, Alabama, Georgia, both jumped in with offers. He was just really liked watching him at the 7-on-7. We were watching Michael Smith, who's the – you know, Gamecock commitment who plays on the same team. Uh, Dupa Coleman, who's a 2025 running back, also has a Carolina offer. They, they've got some dudes he on He might the team. be in this weekend, by the way. Yeah. Haven't, uh, Another one to watch? Yeah, that's one to keep an eye on. Yeah, but Thomas Blackshear, just kind of a just smooth operator, speed, really good route runner. Was even banged up a little bit during the 7-on-7, seven a seven, little nagging injury, Wes, uh, but did an outstanding job. So good for Carolina to get him in again for the second time this summer, and we'll see how things progress. All right, we are chilling at Cobblestone. We are watching people hit the ball into the water right in front of us. I'm, I'm about, I don't want to yell on the radio. They, we've been spotted, so we're going to send the ball. We're going to send this show back to Tyler in studio. All right, we have more on recruiting and more of their observations out there. Birdies with Beamer. Coming up next, Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. 107.5 The Game. Hey, if you're a small business owner in the Midlands, think about all the things that you need to help your business succeed. Things like a plan, happy customers, steady cash flow, but also an insurance agent that gets you. State Farm agent Amy Mason Cup runs a small business in the Midlands, too, and so she understands the unique needs of local business owners like you. Amy will make it easy to choose the right protection at the right price because one thing you don't need as a business owner is insurance stress. So call State Farm agent Amy Mason Cup today for your small business insurance needs, 803-772-5554. Amy is a South Carolina native and a local agent. She and her team can give you a personalized quote to meet your needs, help you save, and protect your business. If you want to go pay her a visit at her office, 612 St. Andrews Road, Suite 4 in Columbia. That's just off I-26 at St. Andrews Road in Ashland Park Plaza. AmyMasonCup.com is the website. The phone number again, 803-772-5554. Great name brand insurance protection for your small business from a Midland small business owner in Amy Mason Cup State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We're from Birdies with Beamer. Coming up next, Gamecock Central Take a Rower. Sent by Firehouse Subs, 107 by the game. We're all juggling life, a career, and trying to build a little bit of wealth. The Brown Ambition Podcast with host Mandy and Tiffany, the budget Nista can help. HGTV's Paige Turner. People are wanting to buy a home. Is it a buyer's market? Is it seller's market? Is it neither? It's neither. If you're in a position to buy a home and if it makes more sense to own than to rent at this time in your life, then buy the house. Just don't buy the house thinking in six months you're going to make a $400,000 profit off of it because that's not there anymore. Brown Ambition wherever you listen. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecock. 107.5 The Game. Uh, yeah! And welcome back into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Here on 107.5 The Game. Wes and Chris broadcasting live from Birdies with Beamer. 
And guys, I just realized that I haven't asked the most important question. Which one of you is the better golfer? Whew. Um, equally bad. I saw a race the, to the bottom right there. Yeah, equally bad, I think, is the answer. We just, uh, by the way, we just saw, we got a decent little view. We can kind of see the guys playing right now. Got a view of the two Jalens, yes. Jalen Foster, Jalen Dickerson, out there. Uh, Caleb Jennerette, who's on staff. I believe I saw uh, Lou Bajak from the state. Give Lou a shout. Uh, but, yeah, pretty cool out here. Great weather. And uh, we're just hanging out watching. Still waiting on some assistant coaches. I don't know, Chris, from the looks of it, it may be in our hour. If so, probably very end. If not, um, you know, I think that noon to one, just reading the room, might be when we get to hear from some of the guys, which I'm kind of disappointed. I uh, I wanted to hear from, from Pete Limbo. I think there's a chance he'll hop on. And uh, obviously some, some other guys as well. Yeah, next year we'll uh, we'll make sure that they move the schedule to accommodate. We're gonna steal Jay the, the first GC part of Jay's Jay hour yeah. next year. Yeah, that way we can get. That's in. What we're gonna do. Speaking of Jay, he has now handed us some really cool 107.5 The Game golf towels that uh, we will not have to use to towel off sweat yet. But if we stay out here long enough, maybe yes. so. Yeah, yeah. Jay, Jay will obviously need it. Wes was just looking at this and showing you this before the break. So on three, and Jesse Simonton, Simonton has put out his uh, his preseason power rankings for the SEC. Can you take a wild stab at who may be on top? I'm going to guess, hmm, Georgia Bulldogs. Yes, the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, did he go Alabama second or LSU second? Well, apparently, Jesse picked LSU to win the SEC West. But coming out of media days, it appears he has changed the, at least the power rankings. I don't know... You know, I don't know if you can if you're allowed to have a separate power rankings and then picking your I think you are your, your team. Okay, so he's picked LSU to win the West, but in his preseason power rankings it is Alabama this number two. And so the reason I brought this up, by the way, he has South Carolina at number nine. And that so that is after Kentucky and right before Auburn. Has Florida, a team that I'm down on, number twelve. I think I may tend to agree with that one. Um so as we know, the SEC is widely viewed as here's probably your top three, and then there might be a, a couple others that kind of challenge that top three that could get up in there, and then you have a lot, you have the bottom, and then in the middle is a mix of schools that seem fairly close. Seems like a lot of toss-up games. The reason I wanted to bring up LSU, though, is Brian Kelly, I had missed this, Brian Kelly going into his second year at LSU, he has started to temper expectations. We're talking about Shane Beamer tempering expectations for his third team a little bit here. Brian Kelly, in his second year at LSU, he's tempering expectations a little bit too. I found it interesting because his LSU team's getting a lot of hype, a lot of buzz. Obviously, they had a good year last year with some of the wins that they picked up. Think about you know beating Bama, for instance. Big win for them in year one. And they do return a lot. They get their quarterback back in Jaden Daniels. They have a really good collection of wide receivers. They have all five starting offensive linemen back. Harold Perkins Jr., who's an incredible linebacker. Mason Smith, a huge former five-star defensive lineman. But Brian Kelly said that he thinks they're a year away from bridging the gap with Georgia and Alabama. Interesting, I thought. Well, for a veteran coach, obviously rookie mistake winning too many games in year one. It's a thing. It is definitely a thing. And I, I I think, Chris, so the more ball I've watched, for the most part, and let, unless you just hire a dud and it just doesn't work out. And usually, I mean, we more and more we see that schools, if they hire a guy that just isn't going to work out, they'll, they'll find a way. There's no, well, you got to give a guy three or four years. They'll they'll just get rid of you. Yeah. But if you, know, if you make a good hire, you get kind of this little instant boost almost where – you got some fresh sayings. You got some, you got some new approaches. Guys who are just completely out for the most part, they don't stick around and screw up your locker room. They don't hang around and complain for the most part. When there's a head coaching change, that that means there's going to be assistant coaching changes too. The guys that aren't in, they just leave. They just hit the portal and go. So I think you get this little instant boost where everybody's bought in again. The most difficult thing 
is once you start getting into year three, year four, and that's when you're starting th- those recruiting classes that you recruited when you were brand new or when you were having to throw together a class in two months. Those are starting to be your upperclassmen, depending on what you do in the portal. And, you know, for, for Brian Kelly, we're not quite at year three or four or anything like that yet. But I feel like when you win right off the bat, you now they won some close games last year too. Um, you know, maybe had some fortune along the way. Alabama obviously lost a couple of really tight games that uh, allowed LSU to represent the West in, in the championship game. So your fan base, rightfully so, they're going to run wild with expectations. I imagine he's looking at it saying, man, we've got we've got some playmakers. Um, you know, they got some receivers. They obviously have a quarterback. He's probably saying this does not have the depth overall on the roster to go out and, uh, you know, and, and feel good going into the season. So he's probably rightfully so starting to kind of say, hey, we got to take a step back here. here. Here's what stands out to me, though, about this list, Chris. So we... And when I say we, I'm talking us, Gamecock media, but Gamecock fans as well. Everybody in the Gamecock bubble, we're going to look at South Carolina's schedule. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to get excited about, hey, South Carolina plays Georgia. South Carolina, Tennessee has become this kind of rivalry. You beat A&M for the first time, um, what, ever last year? Ever. So those are the games everybody's going to circle. However, the key to the season for South Carolina, I look at these SEC power rankings. Number 14, Vanderbilt. Number 13, Missouri. Number 12, Florida. Number 11, Mississippi State. All four of those teams are on your schedule. Mm -hmm. Kentucky, one spot ahead of you, a team you beat at their place. You got them coming to Columbia this year. They're one spot ahead of you, which means it's a coin toss when you're talking about teams being this tight as far as expectations go. So... The key to this season is not, oh, can they beat Georgia and Tennessee and A&M and all these teams. The key to this season, can you beat the teams that, at least according to Jesse, you're, quote, supposed to beat? Yeah, and, and it's a great point. But, you know, you look at last season, why did South Carolina surpass expectations uh, in year two under Shane Beamer? Why did they win eight games in the regular season? Well, you can look at the tail end and say, well, they upset uh, two massive upsets at the end of the year. But they also finally got over the Kentucky hump and, and, and broke that streak. And then they finally b- broke the A&M streak. But there were still some games in there. I mean, you can point to that Missouri game. You can point to the Florida game. The Florida game was a game that should have been closer, right? And that was a that was thought of going in as probably a swing game. It ended up not being. The Missouri game was thought of as either a swing game at worst or a game you probably should win at home, especially at best. Those didn't go your way. So... You're looking at setting the expectations. Shane Beamer surpassed expectations with win totals in year one and year two. If they don't surpass the expectation in year three, that doesn't necessarily mean the program's going backwards, right? But I think that the mark of that progress will be exactly what you said, Wes. Can you beat those? What are those four teams behind them, one right ahead of them? So basically it kind of goes back to the all those teams that are kind of either at the bottom or in the middle are all pretty close. Those are the games that you need to win. Then go try to spring an upset or two. That consistency that Shane Beamer has talked about for really his first couple years of not being so up and down during the season, to me, that's the mark of it. If you can, you know, not tr- – maybe you're trading a massive upset for a game that you're just supposed to win. Maybe that's not as exciting. But you do need to get there as a program, and then you need to get to the point where you're leaving Missouri and Kentucky and these types of programs in your rear view and trying to go chase – one of those bigger programs instead of being them every once in a while being more competitive with them on a year in year out basis the other thing that stands out chris a&m fifth yep on this list i think there's a lot of discussion we don't talk about the west a ton there's a lot of discussion though all right is alabama or lsu one obviously but then once you get past i think most people have those those guys one or two in some order well after that who is in the conversation for third. A&M, for a lot of people, has kind of been, I would say, almost by default, slotted as that third program, third team in the West, and I, I don't know if I see it yet. I don't know if I see that yet. So um, I'm being told we got to hit a break, so uh, back to you, Tyler. Yep, we'll come up and wrap up the uh, rest of the uh, edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs, live from Birdies with Beamer, coming up next on 107.5 The Game. 
Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. And welcome back into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler Head in the Herd New Chevrolet Studios. Wes and Chris live out at Birdies with Beamer. Wrapping up today's edition of the show. Unfortunately not able to grab any coaches during this hour, but certainly hoping that Jay and Terry are able to get some to come through during the uh, halftime show, which is coming up in just a few minutes right here on 107.5 The Game. Yeah, Tyler, get you piloting from the Herndon Chevy Studios for us while we're at Troublestone. Yeah, unfortunately, not able to grab any coaches. Um, we, if we were able to get Pete Limbo, um, we would probably run out of time uh because he would probably get going on some type of you know war story or something like that and then we would uh we would subsequently run out of time right up obviously against the show here but Wes, some some closing thoughts let's take it back to what we were talking about in the previous segment expectations for south carolina in this season and, and shane beamer tempering them and then how kind of the the middle of the sec not bama not georgia not even a and m which has pretty heightened expectations this year even in the media they seem to be picking up a pretty good amount of hype and steam i'm gonna put you on the spot you've done this to me like five different times over the past couple days what do you think the pulse is of the fan base right now as far as what would constitute a successful season for south carolina is it something along the lines of hey you got to go beat missouri finally right it's been what four four in a row for missouri that's a painful, painful streak right now for South Carolina. You got to get people just Missouri. cut their radio off. Just, <laughs> just hearing that. Sorry, sorry. Missouri, Kentucky, like basically the, those bottom four in some of the projections uh, for the SEC overall. Mississippi State being one, Vanderbilt being one, Kentucky's kind of right near you, depending on what you're looking at. Those are the types of teams that you need to go beat. Do you need to go win those games, be competitive in the other ones, and spring an upset or two? I, I think you buy yourself a you buy yourself some goodwill with the fans by by beating Tennessee the way you did, and then by beating Clemson the way you did. Um, wow! If they if they had beaten Notre Dame to finish the year too, yeah. then then actually I don't even know if that would have been a good thing going into this year because the expectations would be through the roof. And, and as we know that that really wasn't even your team. You know, like they were missing so many guys. For that game, that actually may be a, a little bit of a preview of, of what to expect this year. I, I think at, at a number of positions. So, the pulse for the fan base, I think, I, I don't think there's a you have to beat this team this year. For me personally, would, would it would it help a lot to beat Missouri? Um, you know, I, I think that Florida game last year uh, gives a lot of people a bad taste in their mouth. So, I think you want to beat one of those two teams obviously um you know to, to me it's can you let, let's go kind of big picture beamer keeps talking about consistency that's some that's a word he's used a ton this offseason can you find a little bit more consistency from game to game i think that's across the board as far as your execution as an overall team that to me is the big key can you know can you win so you, you won eight games last year you won seven games the year before I think a lot of fans are going to sit here and say, can you win nine? Can you take that next step? Can you win nine this year? Um, I, I do think Beamer has worked very hard to sort of temper that a little bit and say, let's just go play and see what happens. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I don't think there's a specific um, team or program that you're saying they have to beat. But I, I think check the pulse on where their head's at. I think fans – are expecting another step forward in year three. Despite despite the schedule being difficult and But it's uh, always difficult. Always difficult and what was it, PFF had them had this schedule as the worst in the country as far the most difficult in the yeah, country. Toughest. Not the worst. <laughs> very good schedule, but it's a very entertaining schedule. Here's the point though. Even in that, if South Carolina wins all the like games that we would probably say are swing games or toss-up games right now, I would put the following games in that category: North Carolina. Yeah, I'm either. I'm, uh, let me combo it. Should win plus 
swing games. Okay, North Carolina swing game. Furman should win. Mississippi State pick one of those two. That's three. Florida, Missouri, Jacksonville State, Vandy, and Kentucky. Okay, that's eight games right there. So if you could get those eight, if the swing games go your way, which they have not the first couple years, heck, historically they have not. <laughs> There's typically one what the heck game a year at least. But if you could get those, that's eight. Now you've matched last season's win total. If you can go get an upset of one of these other teams that, by the way, are going to be very highly ranked. I mean, you're going to have Georgia, Tennessee, A&M, and Clemson are the other four. Now you're at nine games. Now you've taken care of business. You've won your swing games and you've sprung an upset, and I think that would represent a huge, huge next step. Yeah, but you're never. I feel like you're never going to win all your swing games because they're swing That's games why for a reason. If. That's they why it's an if, though. They come down to swing games. Come down to like ten plays, exactly. If that. So, but in that consistency, if that's what you're going for, you know, then if you can get, if you could get those, and again, I'm with you. You're not going to get all of them, and historically, you haven't gotten all of them. But if you could. The, we're, you got some. the difficult part about the schedule, you're also replacing Georgia State with North Carolina as far yeah. as your out-of-conference yes. game. So yes. a little bit more difficult overall. All right, we're out of time here. I see Jay getting ready. Tyler, back to you. Yep, that'll do it for today's edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs live from Birdies with Beamer, where Jay and Terry will be broadcasting the halftime show coming up next on 107.5 The Game.